Hey guys, Danan here from Sweetheart Alabama, the little herb shop located in downtown Greenville, Alabama, right across from the post office. Open uh, Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, and Saturdays, 10 to 1. So let me just start off by saying, first of all, I am never, ever going to be in favor of anyone doing anything illegal or taking any illegal substance. Okay, and I always believe in people being very careful. Here's why I'm bringing up uh, magic mushrooms. Because I sell legal mushrooms here in the shop, you know, food-based uh, mushroom supplements. A lot of people ask me about the other kind. And so, um, today's the day we're gonna talk about it. So, let's talk about magic mushrooms. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun with it too. Okay, so first of all, let me just say this again. Do not do magic mushrooms, okay? Psilocybin is nothing to play around with, especially if you've never done it before or if you're not in the presence of a healthcare provider. And yes, healthcare providers do um, work with people uh, with psilocybin in certain areas and in medical studies. They are studying psilocybin and we'll talk about that in a second. So the mushroom that you guys are probably thinking of is the Psilocyba cubensis. That is the mushroom that grows under cow patties. Don't go getting these mushrooms thinking you're gonna just eat a couple and get high and have fun and giggle. That's not how it works. It's quite dangerous. And by the way, I have to say this to people quite a, quite a lot, but... <laughs> Not every mushroom that grows under a cow patty is psilocybin cubensis, cubensis and could be quite dangerous. So people don't know what they're doing. They go around uh, picking mushrooms out of pastures and they get themselves in trouble. Don't do it. It's not cool, okay? So now that I've said that, let's really talk about the mushrooms. Um, actually, I'm going to use some reference material. This is Mycelium Running. It's one of my favorite books. We've talked about this book before. It's written by Paul Stamets. Um, the, the world's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, mushroom expert. He's a mycologist who's written 20 books about mushrooms, and he's amazing, okay? So while I love all kinds of mushroom supplements that are legal, I do want to warn you about psilocybin because um, I think a lot of people take it lightly and there is there are medical reasons that people are using psilocybin and we're going to talk about that too. So uh, let me go over a few things that I thought were really interesting uh, from Paul Stamets' book. Um, he says that when used correctly, and by the way, uh, you know, under the guidance of a healthcare provider. Let me just say that. Um, this species of mushroom can be helpful for sparking creativity in artists, philosophers, the theologians, mathematicians, physicists, astronomers, computer programmers, psychologists, and other intellectual leaders. So a lot of people um, that work in the computer programming field are known to microdose. Uh, psilocybin and that's been going on for years in certain areas um, or certain fields of science and math that um, people have been doing that and um, I don't know if that's something they're doing under the care of a physician or not. Um, I know that Colorado is thinking about legalizing um, psychedelic mushrooms so that'll be really interesting to see what happens with that. So what Paul Stamets says is, I personally believe that the computer and internet industries and astrophysics have been inspired through the use of this fungus. Once again, remember mushrooms are not plants, they're fungi. Which has stimulated the imagination and feels a vision of scientists and shamans with complex fractals, hyperlinking of thoughts, and mental tools for complex systems analysis. So anyway. I thought that was really interesting. Let me show you a picture. And look, they look different, okay? So if you see this mushroom, it looks different than this mushroom. Mushroom identification, especially the ones that are growing out of the ground, I try to caution people to be very, very careful with. Um, 
the uh, psilocyba cubensis has a is known to have a ring on the stalk right under the cap and um, that can get you can get confused with other mushrooms with that also a lot of people don't realize they go around picking these and if you pick them with the caps full open you could have maggots in the I mean they're already um, deteriorating you, uh, they're supposed to be picked or cultivated with um, the cap still kind of closed and so people can get into all kinds of trouble with this um, it doesn't just grow under cow patties it also grows under oxen yak water buffalo and elephant dung Woo! grows all over the world um, but so do other poisonous mushrooms okay um, but yes once the caps have opened maggots eat those mushrooms and so you have to be kind of yeah um, so one of the first people who ever started a project scientifically with psilocybin was the Harvard project and Timothy Leary was one of the scientists who did that and um, I actually met him in the early 90s before he passed away and he seemed like the most normal person in the world when somebody said hey that's Timothy Leary over there I thought just a normal looking person and you know, I guess if I had gotten to really, really talk to him a long time, I would have thought, well, yeah, his brain's fried. <laughs> I mean, maybe his brain was fried, but he acted kind of normal. Um, I thought it was really neat to meet him at the time. I didn't know that, you know, he wasn't going to live very long after I met him. I think I met him in like 94 or 95, and he had passed away in 96 or 97, somewhere around there. Um, but it was cool to have met him and and uh, he's talked like a regular guy, you know? Um, but he did a lot more than just magic mushrooms. He was really doing a lot of acid back in the 60s. He was definitely a psychonaut, if you know what I mean. Um, okay, so here's something else that I thought was really interesting, that um, psilocybin has been used in studies and psychiatrists and psychologists are using it to treat patients struggling with alcoholism drug addiction, trauma, autism, and end-of-life issues. Now, specifically, I've been reading about end-of-life issues with psilocybin, and what um, these doctors are doing are helping people who know, um, who are dealing with, you know, that they're dying, okay? And for some reason, doing mushroom trips are helping them cope with, you know, impending death, which, I mean, if you want to be serious about it, I mean, that's something we all have to cope with, right? And um, I thought that was really interesting that they're really helping people deal with that through uh, magic mushrooms. Um, the National Institutes of Health have approved and continue to consider the use of psilocybin mushrooms for treating psychological disorders. Um, and medical practitioners are recognizing what shamans have known throughout history which is with proper guidance, these mushrooms can benefit patients struggling um, with all different kinds of psychological uh, difficulties and help in spe seeking spiritual enlightenment. So there you go. Um, for many, many centuries, these mushrooms were used. Um, people thought they would connect to the universe or nature or God closer. Um, the reason for this is the way it affects your body so um, it affects your perception of time so think about that think about if you've never done anything like uh, magic mushrooms before think about your sense of time is totally off same time as that's happening your sense of space is totally off so you can see how terrifying that might be um, if you're not ready for that, right? Also, you can have visual hallucinations, auditory hallucinations, and uh, emotional hallucinations. So, your whole world is different all of a sudden. And um, so, all of your perceptions have changed. Now, here's where it can be good or bad. If you were under the care of someone who knows what's happening, a physician, healthcare provider who legally is doing this um, 
they can guide you in a way that helps you understand things in a different way, have a different perception of something, right? If you are doing this alone, <laughs> wrong dosages, uh, being stupid, <laughs> drinking alcohol, doing other drugs with it, being around toxic people, you're experiencing anxiety, this could all lead to a very bad situation very quickly. This is why, just in practical terms, you shouldn't do mushrooms, okay? If you don't know what the heck you're doing and, you're, and you should never do anything illegal, ever. Um, so, there you go. I may or may not have had experience with, in this area. <laughs> if I had experience in this area, it would have been way back in the 90s the 90s okay and it would have been uh hanging out with certain bands from seattle way back in the 90s um who may or may not have had some really good stuff back then just saying you know people who didn't like rain and liked girls dressed up as bees hint hint okay um let me just talk about the fda for a second with this so the fda has approved small clinical studies of psilocybin um, at different universities, um, helping people who suffer from OCD and also death issues and helping to treat people with cluster headaches. Um, so also a 2004 study was really, um, had a lot of uh, results back from use of psilocybin to help reduce end of life anxiety in stage four cancer patients. So yeah, pretty interesting there. Um, so here's what happens in any kind of uh, correct psilocybin event. So after a person ingests the magic mushrooms, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes and usually I think most often um, people will become nauseated and vomit all right um, and then after that they start to feel the effects now after they start to feel the effects of magic mushrooms then they are in for a six to seven hour ride okay and there's no getting off that train and so that's another thing that I don't think people realize when they're trying to do this recreationally, which is bad, don't do that, um, is that they don't realize that they can't just like, oh, I'll stop and it'll go away. It ain't gonna go away, honey, for a while, okay? So um, while it's not as bad as like an LSD trip, you definitely can't just stop or get off that train and you're going to have those perception issues for six hours. Can you imagine? Now imagine if that's not really the thing that you should have done for six hours. Having a bad trip for six hours is not a good thing, okay? So for six hours, you're gonna have time and space changes. You're gonna have visual and auditory not really a lot of auditory, but mostly visual hallucinations. You're gonna have emotional hallucinations. Everything, your whole perception of the universe is different. Not something that you need to be playing around with, okay? All right, so I'm gonna read this last quote from um, Mycelium Running. This is a great book. In fact, I'm gonna put a link up for this book for you to find it if you want to learn all about mushrooms and it's not just the silly kind um, it is all kinds of mushrooms edible mushrooms how to grow them yourself I, I mean like I said Paul Stamets is the world's expert in all of this but I'm gonna read you a quote from him and I think it's pretty accurate about what happens to a person when they ingest this even on the best circumstances okay when, and this is him talking, not me. When I have taken these mushrooms, one theme surmounts all. The earth is calling to us to be good shepherds, to wake up to our potential, to stop the destruction of the earth's diversity of species and its habitats, telling us that we are one with the universe, not apart, that we are enmeshed in the continuum, and that the positive power of goodness permeates the cosmos, that's what it feels like to be on mushrooms.
no joke. Um, and then he adds, which I think this is really interesting. Spiritual people of all religions, from Buddhism to Christians, can find that the experience affirms their religious beliefs. Those who have had psilocybin facilitated religious journeys often state that words cannot adequately convey the meaning of their experience. So, um, I think probably these are powerful medicines that people don't need to be playing around with. Um, so if you uh, are interested, I, like I said, I'll put the link up to this book and um, we can talk about it. Um, but I'm not the expert at this at all. I just find it really interesting. I think mushrooms are so interesting anyway. Um, mushrooms in general, all, all mushrooms have closer DNA to humans than they have to plants. They're more like us than they're like plants. Um, which is really interesting. And um, also, if you want to come see legal mushrooms that have uh, medicinal properties, come in and I'll show you the ones that I have here. Lots of really great mushroom products here that are legal. <laughs> How many times have I, do I have to say that? But, um, yeah, I don't... When people ask me about these kinds of mushrooms... Um, I just strongly caution against it. I think that people shouldn't be playing around with stuff they don't know. They don't know how um, it's going to affect them. And I think there is probably a good use for these um, under medical supervision only. Okay, so there I've said it. Um, so you hippies, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. All you hippies can go talk to someone. I'm joking. <laughs> But anyway, I love you guys. If you have any questions about mushrooms uh, that I can't answer, I would love to love to talk about it for real. Come see me anytime. I love you much. Have a great day. Mwah. Bye, guys.